Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. That is a picture of me on the back of the latest Draw with Rob activity book called Monster Madness. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Now, I am a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen some of my books before. This was my very first one. It's called Blown Away, about this penguin here who loses his kite on a very windy day. Maybe you've seen. This one, probably, uh, I'm going to say this one's my most popular one. It's called Odd Dog Out. And it's about a sausage dog. Hang on, let me see. See, look, all the sausage dogs in this sausage dogs, sausage dog world, they all look the same. Look, they all do the same things all the time, except for the odd dog out. So it's a story about how she manages to find her own way in the world. Check it out again if you have not seen it. But we are here today, as per usual, to draw a little picture together. Now, mainly I write picture books. So like the books I just showed you, they're, they're for key stage one children, so younger children from about the ages of, I don't know, two to six or seven or something like that. Um, but very exciting news, I have written a novel, so a children's novel. So it's called Middle Grade. So I guess it's for, I don't know, anyone from about seven to 13, something like that maybe even younger if you like stories and this novel is coming out very soon on the 2nd of September and it's called ba, 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 Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City I've only got one copy of it at the moment and this is it look proper book and everything look it's got a spine with a pencil on it it's got a back cover and it's hardcover which is really exciting post-it notes have I told you I've told you about my post-it notes before you know about my post-it notes that I used to draw for my daughter Poppy didn't you well that actually was the start of the idea for this story because what I used to do Poppy used was when she first started at school in reception she was very nervous about staying for lunch so somebody said why don't you draw a little picture on a post-it note and hide it in her packed lunchbox to cheer her up at lunchtime so I did that on her first day and the next day she that, that evening she came back and said oh Daddy, what are you going to draw for me tomorrow? So I drew something for her the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day, the next day, the next day. And in the end, I ended up drawing a little post-it note, pack lunch post-it note, I called it. I did one for her every single day that she was at primary school. So I think it was something like 2,000 drawings we did. And as you can see, they ended up being quite detailed. And at one point, I remember thinking, well, what if, wouldn't it be fun if, see, a lot, a lot of the things about writing a story is that the, the two most important words, I think, when you're writing a story are what and if. What if. And I remember thinking, what if I drew a picture of a, an apple, say, for Poppy, and that apple was magic. The post-it note was magic. And she could pick up that apple and eat it for her lunch. And then I thought, oh, if I had a magic pencil that could draw stuff that came to life, what would I draw? And um, I, th I think you sort of... The, the, the default thing that you might think of is something like you might draw a million pounds or, or you might draw a really fast car or a jet pack or a rocket ship or something like that. But then I thought, oh, what happens? What would happen if you drew a door? Would you be able to open that door? If you could open that door and you walk through it, where would you end up? And I figured you might end up in an illustrated city. So that's where the idea kind of started actually. And um, so I wrote this story the lead character here, Peanut Jones, this is Rockwell, her friend, and this is her little sister whose name is Little Bit. Um, it's actually Elizabeth, but when she's little she pronounces it Lilibet, and then it sort of becomes Little Bit, because the, the nickname Jean is very strong <laughs> in the Jones household. And this little dog here is called Doodle, but more about him later on. So I thought I'd invent these characters. Um, Peanut's dad, draws little post-it notes for her as well but then one day he mysteriously disappears and the book starts kind of a year after he's disappeared and she's looking through all these post-it notes she keeps them in a nice wooden box come on let me show because this book is I should the other thing I should say is you know it's me this is Rob talking so I have done a lot of illustrations there you go there's some post-it notes uh, this book is heavily illustrated which is quite different I think to a lot of chapter books um, because I don't think you're ever too old to see illustrations in books really I think lots of adult more adult books should have illustrations but as you can see there's a lot of illustrations in here I spent a lot of time doing it and um yes yeah, so she one day she's looking through her little box of post-it notes um in her bedroom so she gets she keeps all her post-it notes let's see if I can find this let's see if 
I can find it. Here it is. Um, she keeps all our post-it notes in this little wooden box here. And the box weirdly has got the words little tail written at the top. And one day she's in her bedroom and she's looking through the box of notes. Here you go. That's my one, probably my favorite picture in the whole book. It took me absolutely ages. That's her in her bedroom, on her bed, looking through all her post-it notes. And in this box here, she suddenly notices there's a secret compartment at the bottom. And inside that secret compartment, she finds a pencil, a magical pencil. There it is, it's on the spine. And this pencil is beautiful. It looks like it's been carved out of wood. And she, what she finds, that whatever she draws with that pencil, it becomes real. And then so one day she draws, hang on, let me see if I can find this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. She draws an apple. Do you remember I said the apple? She shows it to her friend Rockwell on a piece of paper and he reaches in and he picks it up and she actually holds the apple. So whatever she draws becomes real. And then she draws a door and she opens that door and it leads to a totally illustrated world. Here you go, part two, which Peanut discovers the city. And look, she walks through and finds herself in this illustrated world. And that's when the real adventures begin because she finds, makes her way to an illustrated city called Chroma, which is full of lots of different districts, some of which are named after very famous artists. And they have all sorts of adventures in there and meet all sorts of cool characters. There's a comic book district, there's a kind of a kawaii, you know, sort of um, um, cutesy, mangary type art district. There's a comic book, I just said that, comic book district. There's one named after Vincent van Gogh called Vincent's Fields. There's one called Warholia, which is very pop arty. So it's a really fun story and you can see she has all sorts of adventures because whatever she draws, she can use. So here she is drawing a little bobsleigh to go down a mountain in. And so anyway, that's enough about that. <laughs> Suffice to say, I'm very proud of this story. It might be one of the things that I'm most proud of that I've done. And um, and I really can't wait for you all to read it. Because apart from anything else, I'm really pl proud of the words. I, I sort of, I don't really consider myself as a writer, really. I feel like I've, I've got a bit of imposter syndrome about that. So I'm actually really proud that the story, I think it's really quite, I think it's quite good. I know you shouldn't really say that about your own stuff, but I actually do. So I'm really excited for you all to read it. And to celebrate, because it's coming out on the 2nd of September, I thought that today's Draw With Rob episode, I thought I might show you how to draw Peanut herself, if that's all right with you guys. Okay, so what you're going to need is a piece of paper and a pen. And a pen or a pencil or something to draw with and maybe something to color with a bit later on just in case you've never done one of these draw with rob videos before this is how it works lots of people tell me they don't think they're very good at drawing i say do you know what everybody can draw it's just that some people need a little bit more help with the order that we do the drawing in than others which is where i come in because what i'm going to do is break this drawing down into little bite-sized pieces okay and um, I'm gonna draw one of those little bite-sized pieces on my piece of paper then you can pause the video copy what I draw start me up again I will draw something else then you draw then I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw you draw I draw, I draw, I draw, I draw. and we're gonna end up with something that we're really proud of at the end okay got it let's start then shall we so I want you to start right in the middle of your piece of paper we are going to draw slightly curved line almost straight but slightly slightly curved like that sort of going down a bit at each end okay right then let's go to the right hand end first I want you to curve keep curving around and start heading down to the bottom of your page at a slight angle like that okay so it's sort of slightly coming in like that then we're going to keep going along the bottom again in a nice curve until we're level there then we're going to curve around head up our page again at a very slight angle before turning around and coming in again like that so we've got a sort of rounded -y rectangle slightly narrower at the bottom than it is at the top okay and this is going to be peanuts head okay so let's draw peanuts eyes now she's got very big eyes and I want you to draw them uh, we're gonna draw one on each side obviously but sort of quite low down in the face if you see what I mean so we're gonna draw one let's draw them about this sort of size like that but sort of in the bottom half 
of the head. You see what I mean? Like that. And then let's draw one. We'll leave a bit, a couple of centimeters in between, and then draw the other one over here. Like that. Okay? Mine are not exactly the same size, but that's all right. What do I say when you make a mistake? We just keep on going, don't we? And it's often those imperfections that give our drawing its character. And anyway, nobody has got eyes exactly the same size and shape. Everyone's, each eye is slightly different, isn't it? Okay, let's give her a pupil. Right in the middle of the eye, we're just gonna draw a small circle, which we're gonna cover in, like that. And look, Peanut, she's suddenly awake. Nose time, I think. So in the center of those two eyes, sort of level with the pupils, I want you to draw, coming from the middle, so get, find the midpoint, and coming from the middle, we're gonna draw a sort of backward C shape, quite small, like that. And that's gonna be the tip of Peanut's nose. And then from the top of that shape, we're just gonna draw a little vertical line, like that. Nice, easy way to draw a nose. You know me, I always look for the easy route, if possible. <laughs> Let's give her a little mouth. The mouth is going to come slightly lower down, about here. And it's just going to be going up a bit higher on one side than the other. So she's got a slightly lopsided smile. Okay. Right, there's going to be a few other little details we add to her face, like eyelashes and eyebrows. But I'm going to add them after I've coloured in. Because sometimes when I use my black brush pen and I do these things that I then have to colour over it can smudge the pen a bit so I'd rather do the drawing and then add the, that detail afterwards with the pen on top of the colour of Suomi so then it doesn't smudge it so we'll come back to that a bit later but in the meantime we can do the ears so the ears I want you to imagine all of her features are kind of in a line like that across the centre of her face so the ears are going to be lined up with the pupils and they're going to come out and go in like that the side of her face so about that sort of size the other one exactly the same but over here like that I'm just going to switch to a slightly thinner pen because do you know how I like to do my ear swirly bits don't you do you know what actually I'm going to leave those to the end I'll tell you what we'll come back at the end and we'll add all these details in afterwards for the same reason I don't want to smudge it when I do my coloring okay so does that sound all right to you do you mind thank you in the meantime we can add some little hair bands. Now, this is gonna look strange at the beginning, but don't worry, it'll make sense soon. What I want you to do is coming out the middle of the top of her head, we're gonna come up, we're gonna go along, and we're gonna go down, like that, okay? It looks strange, doesn't it? And then just above that, exactly the same length, we're gonna do a sausage shape, like that, okay? And they are gonna be Peanuts hair bands. In fact, we can color them in. One. Two. So two sort of little black sausages sitting in the middle of her head at the top. Because Peanut pulls all of her hair up. Hang on, let me show you here. Can you see her hair? She pulls it all up into like a top knot. A big, lovely, red top knot. And um, so these are going to be the hair bands that hold her hair up. Okay. Now, I think that's where we're going to leave the initial kind of inking. So usually when we do these Draw With Rob videos, we draw the whole outline, don't we? Right at the beginning, and then we do the colouring, and that's it, finished. But this time it's a little bit more, there's a bit more toing and froing. We do some of the outline, then we do some of the colouring, and then we're going to come back and do the rest of the outline at the end, okay? So I'm going to go away now into super speed mode to colour in what I can, okay? So her face, I'm going to add some hair to the top of her head like that but then i'm gonna i'm not gonna do her top knot yet because we're gonna come back and do that because that's my favorite bit so that's gonna be the bit we do after we've done this bit of coloring in and then after we've done the top knot we'll add the final detail okay so it's a bit more it's sort of in three stages this drawing stop talking rob start coloring okay i'll see you back here in 20 seconds or so ready three two one let's go Okay, so there we go. That's me having colored in um, Peanut's face. And um, I'm gonna tell you about a couple of things now. So you can see the first thing I did actually was some hair at the top. Now Peanut, she has lovely, beautiful ginger hair. 
So I've added lots of sort of oranges and golds and yellows and some reds and even some sort of burgundies around here because you'll notice that I've decided uh, that my light is going to be coming in from the left hand side and whenever you're coloring something if you don't want it just to be flat it's always good to have a, quite a nice directional light so my face sorry peanuts face is is um much lighter on this side than it is on this side so I've added some sort of dark shading here and um, I've shaded the pinks of her face and the peaches of her face with little bits of purple and red and some bits of blue and all sorts of things just to make it look a little bit kind of more three-dimensional and I've done the same with her hair so it goes from lighter orange here to sort of darker reds and purples over here and I've added lots of vertical lines in there to make it look like it's kind of pulled back up into this top knot which is what we're going to draw in a minute so that's why I've done that I've also added a little bit of blue sort of in these areas of the whites of our eyes again to make it look slightly more three dimensional now do you remember I said I was going to add some more detail to the face now so first of all can you see where I've colored in it's sort of gone it's sort of um, dulled the blacks down a little bit so sometimes it's worth but can you I don't know if you can pick this up but you can see how my ink is sort of sitting on top of the waxy colored pencil so sometimes the ink doesn't want to sort of soak into the paper when there's pencil on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is the insides of my ears, do you remember how I do the insides of the ears? I always do that swirly thing, don't I? So what you do, you come down, up, down again, and around. There we go. A nice inside of swirly ear thing there. We're gonna do a mirror image of that on this side. So down and around, like that. There we go. And you can see it's much easier for me to do that on top of the pencil than it would be for me to have to color around that. So sometimes with drawing, again, do you remember I said earlier, it's all about the order. You need to do a little bit of forward planning, you see. So now, again, with the eyelashes, we're gonna add one, two, three, four, five eyelashes coming out of the right-hand side of that eye. And then one, two, three, four, five coming out of the left-hand side of that eye, okay? Easy. Now let's add some eyebrows. Remember, if she's smiling, Peanut, isn't she, in this picture? So, you know, do you remember I've always said, haven't I, if you want to make somebody look extra smiley, I'm just going to go over the nose a bit so we can see it a bit better. If you want to make uh, someone look extra smiley, the key is the eyebrows. So we're going to add some eyebrows quite a long way above the eyes. So can you see there, the, pe the ink is sort of bubbling a bit. It's sort of sitting on top of the surface of my pencils. Now that depends what pencils you use. Mine are obviously quite kind of waxy. And what that means is that ink is going to stay wetter for much longer. So you've got to be very, very careful not to smudge it with your hand. Because if I was to smudge that now, it would go all over the place. But there we go. You get the idea. And now the last thing to do is peanut has got lovely rosy cheeks. So I'm going to take a bit of an orangey red pencil here and I'm just going to add just a little patch of rosiness there under the eye. We'll do the same here, but can you see you can't really see it there? And that's because, remember I said I've done that sort of slightly darker color on that side of the face. So I'm going to take a much darker red and I'm going to add my rosy cheek with a darker red like that. And you can sort of go over the top of that to match them out a little bit. So with art, it's all, I mean, with colour especially, it's all about adding little bits and pieces here and there. And with these pencils as well, you can go over it with the light stuff just to blend it in a little bit. So it doesn't stick out too much. So there we go. Uh, some lovely little um, rosy cheeks. She also has beautiful freckles, peanut. So I'm gonna add, with this sort of purpley color, I'm gonna add little patches of freckles right over the top of those rosy cheeks. So she's gonna have some there, some over there. Again, I'm gonna have to go over these ones with darker, a darker color so that we can see them a bit better. It's fine on the lighter, the lighter skin color there, but when it comes to the rosy cheek, which is darker, I'm gonna need to go darker. Sometimes you just got to play around with the colour and see what works. In this case, nothing seems to be uh, showing up. Let's add a little bit of black colour in there, just for those little bits of freckle. Okay, and she's also got some beautiful ones here on her forehead. There we go. Just a little scattering, spattering of beautiful freckles. 
on my forehead. Yeah, that's nice. And I'm going to add just a bit more of the orange in to the freckles. So it sort of ties. So another thing that's nice with the drawing is if your colours across the drawing all sort of match up. So I'm adding the same colour that I used for her hair in her freckles a little bit. Just like that. We add a couple of the lighter ones down here too. And it just sort of makes your whole drawing hang together nicely. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Right. A bit of fun now. Are you ready for this? So, do you remember she's got all her hair piled up into this top knot, which is what those two hair bands are there. So we now have to draw the top knot. Now her top knot is basically the same sort of size as her head, it's slightly rounder. So what we're gonna do, I've got my big thick pencil here. I'm just gonna go, this is fun. I'm just gonna go crazy, do a big scribble. Sort of roughly in the right shape, right to the top of my page. Like that, oh, it's fun, such fun. Let's add a little swirly bit coming out there and there. Okay, now, obviously I'm gonna have to build up the color here. I'll add a bit of this sort of reddish color too. And then let's start with some of the colors that we used down here for the hair. Again, we wanna tie it together. So there's the main bright orange that I used. And I'm just going to build this colour up. I'm going to add a little bit as well in between there and maybe a slightly more solid bit there where the main body of the hair would be. And then just a couple of little swirly bits sticking out of the side like that. But essentially we just keep on building it up with the colour. It's really fun. This is why I love drawing peanut. You can just go crazy. I'm gonna add, there we go. Maybe I'll make the right hand side of the top knot bit a little bit darker as well, just to match the bottom half of the drawing. So we'll add a bit of dark on the right hand side there. You can color in a bit more. You know, we want to get a good coverage with the color. But essentially, you can do that just by scribble, scribble, scribble. Oh, it's fun scribbling. I haven't done much scribbling recently. Uh, what shall I add now? Let's go for a bit of this one. Really quite nice and dark. Just here. And you can see, because of all your scribbles on top of each other, you get this really lovely hair texture, don't you? Because hair, if you look at your own hair, it's sort of a, there's so many different colours in there. You might sort of think of yourself as having brown or black or blonde or whatever colored hair but actually it's made up of lots of different colors even though the kind of the darkest hair is not just one color it's all sorts of different subtly different shades of that dark color and so here with peanut with a lovely ginger hair it's made up of lots and lots of different colors there we go I'm getting there now we're getting there Looking pretty good, I think. Not bad at all. Hang on, what's that? Oh, there it is. I keep losing my pencils. Here we go, we'll do some of the lighter colour over here, just to make it look a little bit richer. There we go. That's not bad. That's not bad. Last of all. In fact, let me take my darkest colour. Got a nice dark brown colour here. <clears throat> a bit in there and just right in the sort of the bottom right and slightly over there a bit of a dark colour you can even take a bit of that through to here like that there we go a lovely top knot for peanut and that's pretty much it that is how you draw peanut jones the character from my very first novel where I'm going to put all my pencils down now they're going to make a noise here we go <laughs> um, so Peanut Jones, the star of my very first novel, Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City, not bad, it's pretty good likeness, I'd say, did I forget anything? I don't think so, we got it all in there. So don't forget, a very important part of your drawing, we need to sign it. 
So I'm gonna sign it here. I'm gonna do my full name this time. There we go. Rob Biddle, we'll put the date, the year, 2021. So sign your drawings. Now I really, really, really want to see all of your Peanut Jones drawings. So the best thing for you to do is to take a picture of your drawing or get your grown up to take a picture of your drawing. And then if you post it on social media using the hashtag draw with Rob, that way I will get to see it. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can comment underneath with a, with a picture of your drawing and I'll get to see that too. And as I said, I cannot wait to see your drawings. Um, should I tell you why she's called Peanut? I don't think I've told you that yet. Because Peanut, so as I said earlier, her sister's called Little Bit. Her name is Peanut. So obviously, obviously nicknames are very popular in the Jones family. The reason she's called Peanut, her real name is actually Pernilla. So her name is Pernilla Ann Jones. But ever since she was a little tiny, tiny, tiny little thing in her mum's tummy, her mum and dad referred to her as Peanut because she was the size of a peanut back then and then it just sort of stuck when she was born they stuck with it she's she's still peanut now and i think it's quite a cool name my wife used to call our children peanut when they were little so that's where it came from so that's why she's called peanut and i cannot wait for you to meet her in this book which is out on the 2nd of september and available to pre-order now from wherever you get your books so check it out and if you get it and you read it let me know what you think I'm a bit nervous about this because it's my first novel, but I hope, hope, hope you like it. Right then, that's it. Don't forget to send me your drawings. Um, I'm going to be back very soon with another episode of Draw with Rob. Um, you should be subscribing to my newsletter. If you subscribe to my newsletter, here is where you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, then I will let you know when the next video is coming out. I'll also let you know about any new book news or any live event news, that kind of thing. So it really is the best place to find out all the new stuff about what I'm up to. Um, follow me on all the social medias as well and that way I'll keep you up to date and you can, you can find out when the next Draw With Rob video is. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications and then you'll get a little message when a new video drops. Okay. That's it. I'm done now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Keep those pencils sharpened. Keep on drawing. Keep on reading. And I'll see you again very soon. All right. Bye, everyone. Just when you thought you got rid of me, here I am again popping up at the end of your video and I'm here to tell you all about the brand new Draw With Rob activity book. It's called Draw With Rob Monster Madness and I think you're really going to like it. I mean of course inside you are going to meet him, her, don't forget about him and of course my favourite. Huh. So listen, this book is full of puzzles. Um, it's got lots of things where I've started off the drawing and you guys need to finish it off. We have got mix and match monster games in there. We've even got like a monster party invite kit for you to use for your own monster parties. As well as that, we've also packed it full of the regular draw alongs all of which you get a little picture frame you can do your drawing in and there's perforated edges for you to tear the pages out, stick them up on your fridge or send them out to your relatives. And then of course, once you've finished the book, you qualify for this exclusive monster artist certificate that you get to fill in, frame it and put it up on your wall. Now this book I think is perfect for any little monsters out there. And guess what? It's out. Now, you can get it right now from wherever you get your books. So go and have a look online or better still, visit your local bookshop. Right, I'm gonna go now properly, let you get on with your day. Thanks so much for drawing along with me. Don't forget, check out this book and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.